What's going on guys? So uh, obviously you read the title. It's up there. Um, kind of gives away the subject of the video, doesn't it? <laughs> so there's no real surprise. Uh, this is probably the, well definitely my least favorite Benchmade, but if I have to say that this is the worst Benchmade absolutely that I've ever had. Period. Um, this knife is discontinued and for good reason. All right, there was two versions of this. There was this uh, kind of satin blade and they also had a black bladed version of this knife. This is the Model 320 Precinct. All right, so this is basically, um, you know, collaboration with uh, Butch Ball. Butch Ball, the custom knife maker. He has a, a few different knife designs that are, you know, just identical to this. This is just kind of a production version of his knife. Now, right off the bat, I've never had that exact knife. I've never had any custom knife from Butch Ball before. Uh, his knives look beautiful. You can Google his name and check out his website and stuff. You can see it at other high-end dealers. Um, his designs look awesome, and I'm sure they're very comfortable. Now, I can say, as a silhouette, just the overall shape of this knife, it is very ergonomic. It's very nice. A little uh, cutout for the thumb, a nice finger troll here. We got a little uh, curved area for our middle and um, ring finger. And then a little rest for the pinky. I mean, it's just, it's ergonomically very well done. I'm sure on the custom. <laughs> on this one, I just feel like Benchmade cut corners. They just cut a ton of corners here. Um, now, when I say like the worst Benchmade ever made, it's of all the Benchmades I've ever had. Now, Benchmade overall, I think it's a good company. I think they make fantastic knives. They made great knives my entire life. My whole existence, I've been making knives. And quality knives, right? Of course, everyone has their own opinion on things and all the politics aside that, you know, happened a couple of years back, I guess now, um, you know, I think they make a quality product overall. 99.9% .9 of their stuff is great to me. They are expensive, okay? And sometimes it's hard to say, oh, this is a great knife because you know there's so much competition out there. You can get a knife that has very similar performance or even better performance for less money. But when it comes down to, you know, different brands and stuff, it's just they price their things at what they price them at. Uh, Benchmade is the world's second largest knife company. If that's still correct information, it's been for years. Uh, the biggest knife company in the world, Victorinox, if you didn't know. Okay, and that, that's not only how much money they make, but also how big their operation is, how many employees they have, things like that. Benchmade is number two. Benchmade also has done a ton of um, you know, military and law enforcement contracts. That's where obviously they get a ton of money. Um, so, I mean, they're very established, you know what I'm saying? And uh, ever since I was a little kid and, and first got into knives, that logo, that butterfly logo meant quality. You know what I'm saying? The top two for production knives has always been Benchmade and Spyderco. You know, Spyderco has so much variety. They have so many awesome knives, uh, but so does Benchmade, you know? And then some people kind of lean on one side of the fence or the other. Yeah, I'm a Benchmade fan or I'm a Spyderco fan. I'm a knife fan. I've said that many times before. I don't have any brand loyalty, okay? If Benchmade makes a crappy knife, I'm gonna let you guys know. It's a crappy knife. This, to me, is a usable knife, but definitely, absolutely not worth the money they charge for these. Now, again, as I mentioned, they are um, discontinued, okay? So if you want to get one of these things, you have to find it on eBay or get it from another collector or something. Um, this one, I'm sure eventually I'll sell it. But uh, this one originally sold for $130 in and around. The black bladed version was $140. I would have loved to see this be 50 bucks, okay? Now, obviously, these days, there, I don't think there is a, a $50 Benchmade. Benchmade makes expensive knives. Most of their stuff's over 100 bucks. Um, back in the day, I'm sure some of you watching, or many of you watching, remember when Benchmade had their red class. At some point, you know, they divided these different knives into classes, right? The black, the gold. The gold class is like, you know, they're cool models, but they're just totally upgraded and pimped out with different materials and stuff, Damascus blades and all kinds of handle materials and stuff. And you had blue class, black class, and the red class. The red class was basically their, their uh, different designs that they were making overseas. That's right. Benchmade has always been touted as, you know, an all-American company uh, made right here in America. Um, and at some point, they said, hmm, let's hit the market for cheaper knives. And they made a red class, which uh, the stuff was made overseas. And it was more affordable. They were more like, you know, better Kershaw CRKT prices. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they, they had the Benchmade logo on there, and they were awesome. Like... The monochrome is one that stands out. I've actually done a video on it. That's the knife that I carried across America when I went on a trip with my uh, grandfather. Uh, at some point, I got another one. I did another video on it. I just love that knife. It's just awesome. And I think originally it was like 40 or 50 bucks. You know what I'm saying? So it's just nice they hit that market for a long time. But 
you know, at some point, I don't remember exactly why, but they got rid of the red class. Maybe they got too much flack for it being made overseas. Who knows? Um, but yeah, they ditched that entire idea, and now they're just making expensive knives again, right? So this one, I think, really, it stands out as something that would have been in the red class, okay? Now, what I mean by that is our blade, which is in 154 cm, is fantastic, okay? The blade shape, it's a little bit of a recurve, all right? It is a drop point blade, but you can see it curves down and it comes back up a little bit towards the uh, the base there, okay? So we have a slight recurve. It slices awesome. The actual blade steel and quality is awesome. My gripe is not so much like, you know, the actual performance of the blade and the edge. It cuts stuff, it cuts stuff fine. But it's in the comfort, the ergonomics, and the simplicity of this knife. Sometimes simple is not better. All right, I just feel like, what are they offering? You know what I'm saying? It's like the handle's not even there. So just the blade, what's that worth? You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, $130. We have an open frame design here. All right, let me zoom in so we get some action on this. Open frame design, all right, it is a liner lock. The lockup is good, there's no blade play. Okay, so can't critique that at all. Um, but we have a slab of G10 on top, a slab of G10 on the bottom, and just the liner lock liner side. All right, so there's no liner on the top. So one little you know, metal liner, a couple standoffs here, and that's it, all right? Throw on a, a pocket clip. Um, it's just, uh, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, not in the ergonomics, but it just feels very unfinished. If I come in and using this, it was uncomfortable right here, all right? Not only, we have the little jimping that's on the liner lock itself, which is not too bad in using the lock, but when my finger, my pointer finger is obviously wrapped around and, and actually cutting things, not only do I feel the texture on that, those little teeth there, but also you can see the scale, the G10 scale is ground so thin right there, it's actually sharp. There's sharp edges on it, all right? They put a scallop in so that it'd be comfortable with your finger, you know, when holding it, my finger wraps around, but it doesn't work out that way, okay? The pressure is right here on these kind of pointy teeth and that very, very thin edge, all right? So the design was just not well done. And, and I mean, this, this amazes me because like, you know, when these people make these knives, I don't know, you know, who, whose job it is. I don't have someone's name to call them out. Um, but you know, you make a knife and, and you make a prototype, whatever, and you carry it and you just like, guess, I don't know what they do with their prototypes, but they pass around people are like, yeah, that's cool. But like, maybe the prototype was better. I don't know. But when they pumped this one out, no one just held this and, and used it and cut something and went like, eh, you know, not the best. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, like I said, I love the design. I would love to have the actual butch ball version of this knife. I think it's it's cool looking, you know, it's aggressive looking. Um, and uh, I'm sure his customs are very well done. It just, it feels lackluster. You know, it feels like there, it's just, I'm let down because there's not more for the money, for the cost. Now, of course, I didn't buy this. I traded for it. Like I do most of my stuff. Um, but uh, I was excited about this one because I just never had this model before. And like I said, I was just disappointed. Now, it does cut things. It cuts fine. Again, the blade is fine. Their, their heat treatment, their 154CM is just fantastic. The blade style is very good. Obviously, it's good for, for slicing, especially if you start down you know, towards the heel of the blade here. Because of the recurve, it just digs into ma uh, material. All right. So as you're slicing, that blade just wants to dig in. You know, It is nice and sharp and stuff. So performance, yeah, it's kind of there. I don't know. It's like having a, I don't know, a great gun with a horrible grip. Does that make sense? Uh, it's like having, I don't know, uh, I'm trying to think of something else that's not <laughs> gun and gear related. Uh, I don't know, um, let's say a car, a car that looks fantastic. I'm sure some of you guys have experienced this. Beautiful car, cool sports car or something, and you get in it and it's just uncomfortable to drive. Does that make sense? All the power's there, all the performance there, all the looks are there, but you're not comfortable using it. You know, so it kind of takes away from it. You still want to use it because it performs, but it's just, it's just the, it's blah to me, all right? Uh, you can see this one does have the uh, deep conceal clip, all right? So it does wrap around. Um, did carry and use this one. Again, using it was okay other than the discomfort. Now, I really got more discomfort when I, I went at it with a, a bunch of cardboard, okay? Any extended cutting, it just, it was really, really uncomfortable on my pointer finger here, which wanted me to literally stop using it. I switched off to uh, something else. I had a different uh, SFG knife at the time that I was testing. Um, and yeah, I just, I just stopped using it. So, I don't know. It's just one of those things. I mean, I'd, I'd steer clear of it if you were interested. Again, it's going to be a little hard to find, so it's not that big of a deal. It's not like people are still buying these right now. Um, 
it just was my least favorite Benchmade. I've always liked Benchmades. I like their staple models, the Gruptillions. Obviously, the bug outs have been such a big deal. Uh, the large, the small, any versions of it, you know, they're all cool. They're all great, you know, lightweight knives and stuff. Um, it's just one of those things. I just, I didn't like it. I just really didn't like this one um, because of this discomfort there. I just feel like it was lazy. You know what I'm saying? It was just lazy. They come out with such beautiful stuff, and then there's this. So my expectations were kind of higher, especially for the price. You know, $130 to $140 is not cheap. It's not cheap for anyone, even if you're rich. Um, that's, that's a lot of money for a pocket knife, you know. So you kind of have these expectations. And, of course, in my situation, I, I've handled so many different Benchmades that there's like a, a level of uh, quality that I was hoping they would reach. And I, I, didn't, I didn't question it until I actually got it in my hand. I'm like, oh, come on, really? It's just if you took this logo off completely, right, if you took the logo off, I would say this is like, I don't know, a $40 or $50 knife. If you took the blade steel away and put something cheaper in here, I would literally say this is a $10 knife. You know what I'm saying? It's just, for what it is, the actual design, it's super easy to make. Now, obviously, tolerances are better than, you know, a cheap $10 knife. Um, you're not going to get this kind of lockup in a liner lock for, for $10. Bucks, but, I don't know. You guys, I'm sure you know where I'm going with it. So, anyway, just to throw out some uh, quick specs in case you were interested. 3.3 inches on that blade again, so 154 cm. It does actually cut very well. 4.4 uh, inches closed. All right, simple black G10. I don't think they made any other colors. Just the black G10 with the satin blade, and the uh, black G10 with the the black coated blade. Uh, and then the overall length is 7.7 .7 inches. Uh, it does carry fine in the pocket again with the pocket clip. Good uh, tension on that. No complaints at all. There is a lanyard hole in the bottom if you want to throw a, a lanyard on here. And you can see it is swappable with the clip for uh, tip up right side carry or left side carry um so yeah i mean it's just overall i mean if you compare this to you know most 20 and 30 dollars knives i mean you're going to say yeah this is a great knife it's a good quality but again i'm i'm their levels up here you know what i'm saying 20 30 <laughs> knives are down here because of the blade steel and everything because of the tolerances boom right here but it's just so simple i just would have liked to see this for 99 dollars. you know i don't see why that wouldn't be possible you know, there's just not much going on here. But anyway, I don't know. It's just, just one of those things. This is just my least favorite Benchmade ever. Ever. I've had a lot of them for many years. So let me know down in the comment section if you happen to have a precinct, what you think of yours. But again, it's just, it's, uh, I don't know, it's lacking. It's definitely lacking in uh, being exciting. It's just really kind of blah to me. Uh, but it does perform, you know, the quality is there. I can't knock it for that as far as performance. Again, handle aside, it's not the worst thing in the world. I've had far more uncomfortable knives. But again, my, my standard is up here. And the price tag reflects that every single time. This costs 50 bucks. Yeah, pretty good $50 knife. $130? Uh, you're falling short, Benchmade, at least on this one. But maybe you recognize that, and that's why it was discontinued. Who knows? But I have to say, it did uh, strike my interest in maybe... Looking for a Butch Ball Custom, I don't know. Like I said, the design is cool. No, nothing against the designer, it's just the, uh, you know, the execution of the production version of it. So, anyway, that is all. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Let me know down in the comment section um, what your favorite brand is, if you have a favorite brand. I don't have favorites, you guys know that. I'm pretty versatile. I, I like pretty much every knife company out there. Every knife company has cool knives. Every knife company has a couple bummers that I'm just not into, you know. Um, but if you have a favorite knife company, let me know what knife disappointed you. You know, what was the worst Benchmade that you've ever had? What's the worst Spyderco you've ever had? The worst CRKT, Kershaw, uh, SOG. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, just curious. Curious to hear about a knife that you were stoked for and uh, was just disappointed. You know what I'm saying? Again, it's just, it's just kind of blah. That's it. I mean, it's a knife. It works. It opens, it closes, it locks. Um, but it's just not exciting at all. So thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow with another video because I post them every day. If you're new to the channel and don't know that, I do. I post them every day. Unfortunately, if you subscribed, you may not you know, get any kind of notifications. Even if you hit the bell thing, you know, that doesn't always work. So if you do enjoy the content, you know, uh, just check back every day. There's something new. You know, not every video is a winner. I can admit that. Um, but it just depends on what you're looking for. You know, some people subscribe for one specific thing. And they don't see it for like a month or two months or who knows how long. And then they get bummed out. But uh, eventually things roll in, in circles. You know what I'm saying? So if you're a certain type of video that you like, you know, hang around. Check it out. I might post it tomorrow. You never know. 
So that's all. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I'll see you tomorrow.